Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. What we're going to do now is use this nice table of transforms that we have derived and have on the board to solve some real problems. We're going to start with the easy problems and gradually ratchet it up. I think you're going to find that now that we've gotten over that hump of understanding what the transform is, what the integral is, and how to, how to use it, and how to build this table, that these problems here are quite simple now that we know how to do that. So let's say that we want to find the Laplace transform of the function of time, t to the fourth. So that's f of t is equal to t to the fourth. So the way you would do that on your paper is you would just say Laplace transform of f of t is equal to the Laplace transform of t to the fourth, right? So how do you do that? You go over to your table of Laplace transforms and say, hey, is there anything that looks like that? Ah, t to the power of n going to be n factorial over s to the power of n plus 1. In this case, n is equal to 4. All right, so you have 4 factorial over s to the 4 plus 1. All right, and then 4 factorial, you should know, is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over s to the fifth power. And so what you're going to get is capital F, which is a function of S, which represents the Laplace transform of the function of F transformed into the S domain. 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, over S to the fifth. All right? And that's what you would circle on your test. So you have transformed from t to the fourth on into the S domain, which gives you 24 over S to the fifth. And now you have a function of S. So that's why we say function of time, function of S. The F goes with the big F. That just lets you know that these are linked by this transform. We use that sort of um, um, symbology there. But really, it's its own independent function of S, which is representing the function, but in the Laplace domain, or in the S domain. All right, now the next problem, let me switch colors. What if we have F of t is sine of 2 times t? And you want to find the Laplace transform of this. So you say Laplace transform of sine 2t. And you go over here and say, is there anything that looks like that? And of course, we have a sine function right here. In this case, beta would be 2. Sine 2t, beta would be 2. It's going to be beta over s squared plus beta squared. Here, beta is equal to 2. So uh, you can just write, re, re, uh, refresh my memory, at beta over s squared plus beta squared, where beta is equal to 2. So it's going to be 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. And so to write the full answer, you can say f is a function of s, which implies that you've already transformed it. It's 2 over s squared plus 4. And that's what you would circle, again, on your exam. So notice you have a function of s. There's nothing else here except s's. All right, we've locked down this value of beta when I was given this specific problem at hand. All right, so let me go ahead and erase the board here. And we'll work on our next couple of problems, which are really no harder, but we're just going to work our way through our skills. All right, now the next problem says, let's take the Laplace transform of 5 times e to the 2t minus t cubed. And furthermore, let's try to write it out in integral form, not because we want to do all the calculus, but just to see how it would look. Because that can definitely give you some experience, too. All right, so what you would have if you were doing it by the definition of the transform, which we're just doing here for clarity, just to kind of show you, integral e to the minus s t, and then you open up parentheses and dump your function, and now your function is a linear combination of two things. It's got an exponential, and it's got a minus sign here, actually, and it's got t cubed dt. So if I didn't know anything about this table of transforms, I would dump this in, and I would try to integrate it. And furthermore, I can rewrite this let me go to the left a little bit. I can rewrite this as integral 0 to infinity e to the minus s t 5 e to the 2 t dt plus another integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus s t negative t cubed d t. Make sure you understand this. All I'm doing is I'm saying, look, I can break this integral up into two pieces and I can say, because what I can do is I can take this exponential and multiply it in times this. That's going to be one integral. I can also multiply it in by this. This negative I'm keeping track of here, and so that becomes a positive. And so basically I have two guys right there. And actually, I can, if I want to, since it's just a constant, I can take that negative 
and I can pull it out. It's the same exact thing. So what I've done here is I've shown you from calculus, because it's just an integral, that because you have a linear combination of two things, it's basically applying the Laplace transform separately. Once to this guy, and then secondly to this guy. Any uh, pluses or minus just basically link the two guys together. So another way to write this is Laplace transform of 5e to the 2t minus Laplace transform t cubed. So this is kind of what your first instinct would have been anyway. If I had given you this problem and I said, what's Laplace transform? You apply it to the first term, you apply it to the second term, whatever is here plus minus just links them together. I'm just going through the integral here to kind of show you that by calculus that, that basically it all connects together and it works. So that's linearity. That's the property we discussed. Now that we got down to this level, we can apply the transform separately. Let's go ahead and do it. Right? So does anything look like this? e to the 2t. Well, we see right here e to the 2t fits this. 1 over s minus 2 is what it would be there. But we have this 5 out front. But don't forget, we actually said when we talked about linearity that any constants in the function can be pulled out because just as you see here, it's just an integral. So the constants can come out here. There's really only a 1 that comes out, so there's nothing to, to show there. So what it becomes then is it becomes 5 times the Laplace transform of this, which we already said is 1 over s minus 2. That's the Laplace transform of e to the 2t. Then we subtract off, and we say, what's the Laplace transform of t cubed? We go here, we say that it's going to be 3 factorial s to the m plus 1, which would be s to the fourth power. So we say, just to show it, we say 3 factorial s to the 3 plus 1. I don't like to do too many things in one step, so I like to show everything. And so what I would have here is 5 over s minus 2 minus 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is still 6 over s to the fourth power. So I get 5 over s minus 2 minus 6 over s to the fourth. This is f capital of s because it's a function of, uh, it's a pure function of s. So notice that what's happening every time we, we transform these guys, is I go from a function of t to a pure function of s. It gets confusing whenever you first learn about the transform because you see betas and lambdas and stuff running around, but those are just constants. Those are locked down by your problem. You should end up with a pure function of s. That's what the Laplace transform is. All right, so let's go on to the final problem in this lesson, which is going to be, what if I have the function f of t is t squared minus 7 plus cosine of 2t. How do we take the Laplace transform of this? So we say Laplace transform of f of t is equal to. Well, first of all, we have three terms. Here we have linked by a minus. Here we have linked by a plus. But from the linearity, you should now know that we just apply the Laplace transform to each little piece separately, just like we do in integration. The minuses and pluses will just link the answer. So we go and look at t squared. T squared fits this mold, so it'll be 2 factorial over s to the 2 plus 1. So what we're going to write here is 2 factorial over s to the 2 plus 1. That's going to be the first term. And then we carry the minus sign, which comes from here. And now we have to take the Laplace transform of 7. Now, we don't have a Laplace transform of 7. Okay, obviously we don't have that. But we have the Laplace transform of 1. So notice that 7 right, is just a constant. You can write 7 as 7 times 1, right? So you can think of it as pulling the 7 outside, for lack of a better word, and now it's the Laplace transform of 1, which is 1 over s. So 7 times, 7 times 1, 7 is pulled out because it's a constant. Laplace transform of 1 uh, is 1 over s. And that's how you get this guy. And then the plus sign links it here, and now you have cosine 2t. So here's cosine. So you have s over s squared plus beta squared, so that's going to be a 2 squared. So it's going to be s over s squared plus 2 squared. And so the final answer is f of s. Here, 2 factorial is just 2. s cubed is what you'll have on the bottom, minus 7 over s for the middle term, plus s over s squared plus 4. This is the final answer. 2 over s cubed minus 7 over s plus s over s squared plus 4. Notice again, this is a pure function of time. We have transformed into a pure function of s. If you end up with a Laplace transform, 
that has anything other than just S's and numbers, you've done something wrong. Uh, so that's just something you need to think about. What we've done in this lesson is we're just inching our way forward. I think we're taking what we've done here and we're applying it to some common problems using some of the properties of the transform, such as linearity, pulling out constants and things. And these kinds of skills are really important because what we're going to do here in a little while, when we get a little more practice, is we'll start applying it to differential equations. And so then you'll basically take the Laplace transform of both sides of that differential equation and basically get a new equation that can be solved simpler than the original differential equation could, could ever have been. And then you'll be able to get the answer in inverse transform back. That's the basic roadmap. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get some more practice with taking transforms and also inverse transforms before we get to doing those differential equation solution methods.